Hi folks, uh, today we're going to talk about Istio Service Mesh Simplified Beyond a Single Cluster. Uh, my name is Lin Sang. I'm a senior technical staff member at IBM. Uh, I'm also a contributor to the Istio project. Uh, Sven, you want to introduce uh, yourself? Hi, I'm Sven Mawson. I'm a... Yes. <laughs> Sorry, a little lag there. Uh, I'm Sven Mawson. I'm a principal engineer at Google working on Istio and related service mesh technologies at Google. So we're going to talk about uh, Istio Simplified um, Single Cluster, a lot of work we have done in this area. And then we're going to dive into the background uh, multi-cluster and then we're going to show you some of the work we are working on together in the community on uh, how we simplify multi-cluster experience for our user. And uh, we're going to give you a really interesting demo. And then we're going to pass on to talk about what if you are running um, VMs, running your service on VMs, how we are simplify your experience in that scenario. So I don't know if you guys uh, talk, uh, listen to our talk uh, from Louis and uh, Steve about it's still simplified on um, service mesh con uh, Europe early this year. So essentially uh, to summarize uh, that up, uh, just give you guys a background. Um, we have done a lot of work in the Istio community to simplify Istio itself. Um, so first the mixer goes away while well, the mixer functionality folded into the sidecar proxy. We have the injection uh, system, uh, Gailey, the config, config system goes away and that function folded into pilot. We have the sidecar injector is also folded into pilot. And the last, um, we also have the node agent uh, folded into a uh, pilot agent so that you don't need a uh, set of pod security policies. Uh, we also have a Citadel function folded into pilot. So pilot is becoming Istio D, uh, where the D stands for daemon. Uh, and it really helps our operators who runs Istio uh, control plane because they only have to worry about one single components. Um, so great simplification work done by the community for the single cluster. Um, some of you might have already set up a uh, multi-cluster with Istio Mesh. And uh, I, if you do, I guarantee you, you're probably very confused. Uh, why are we having two models? We have this model called Replicate Control Plane, which is uh, what's on the left side. Uh, a lot of users are actually very interested in that model because they have this model provides high availability on the control plane. So you could have a uh, Istio control plane running in cluster one and cluster two, and you could selectively expose what are the services uh, you want to expose to the other cluster instead of everything together. Uh, we also have another interesting model on the right side called shell control plane model, which means uh, two of the cluster are actually using one uh, Istio control plane. Uh, and in this case, all the services are shared among the clusters. So there's a lot of confusing to a user, uh, you know, which one should I use? Why we have to, you know, why some requires uh, core DNS setup, the other one doesn't require why the other one doesn't allow users to selectively choose what they are exposing to the other cluster. So a lot of confusing in this. Um, the good news is uh, we are taking a lot of effort in the community to unify the Istio multi-cluster model. So with this new model, um, if you have two cluster, like what the diagram shows, um, you will be thinking about, um, based on your requirement, whether you are going to need to run Istio D on just one cluster or whether you run Istio D also for high availability of your control plane um, on the second cluster. So it's up to you as a choice. Um, 
you can also choose to run uh, whether you run ingress gateway on um, both cluster or just run it on um, your primary cluster so that's also a choice uh, to you based on uh, your control plane model and also based on your network model uh, topologies and then finally you can also choose uh, for the services on your data plane you can choose uh, what services are you exposing to the other clusters and you can also so, uh, based on your needs to create the mirror for the services as needed. Uh, Savan, can you take over this? Yeah, um, so Lynn talked uh, about some of these choices already, but basically we're trying to have a unified model here where you as the user you know, are, are in charge of, of what control planes you run. So. For each cluster, do you want to run a control plane in it for availability and redundancy, or do you want to use, you know, fewer control planes so you have less to manage and use remote control planes? Um, the network choices usually aren't really up to you. It depends on your network topology, but Istio works with kind of whatever network topology you have, um, whether everything is on one network and is reachable, all the pods can reach each other, or if you need to go through some gateways. Um, and as Lynn mentioned, you can also choose which services become visible to other clusters. Um, and then there's also the sort of notions of identity and trust within the mesh where the um, different CAs in the mesh with their different roots um, all come together and trust each other. And so within the mesh, you can talk um, from one pod to another and, and everything works. Um, you can also set up federated trust between meshes, so you can have multiple meshes that talk to each other. Um, we also talk in our multi-cluster model a lot about tenancy models, and Istio really supports two different models here. One is kind of a namespace tenancy model where you don't worry as much about clusters, and it's really just the namespace name determines sort of the team name. Um, and that's kind of the, the built-in model where names are treated the same if they're in the same namespace. But you can also use clusters as your tenancy model where maybe one team owns a particular cluster. Um, we recommend even if you do that, that you do actually still split out namespaces and make sure namespaces are unique. Um, so just a little bit more detail on kind of the, the first two things, the control planes and the networks. Um, so control planes, it's really your choice, right? Where do you want to install a control plane? Um, you can install you know, a control plane in each cluster, and those are sort of known as primary clusters. You can also choose not to install a control plane and just have a cluster that is remote to some other um, control plane. And you just set that up um, as part of installing Istio as part of our guides. You choose this cluster is remote, and it's remote to this particular primary. Um, so it's really your choice. We recommend that you have enough primary clusters that you have the availability that you need. Um, so usually at least one per region. There's another model that actually recently um, has been coming out of the Istio community, which is this notion of external control planes. And so when you have that remote cluster, it's remote to some control plane. That control plane doesn't actually need to run in one of your clusters. It can run outside. It can be a vendor provided control plane. It could be one that a platform team is running for um, teams within your organization, however you want to set it up. But this lets you separate the management of the mesh from the management of the control plane. And basically all your clusters become remote clusters to these external control planes. On the network side, as I mentioned, Istio supports kind of whatever network setup you have. Um, and the way we do this is when you're within the same network, um, where pods can just talk to each other, they'll just talk to each other and they'll call directly. Um, and again, you can run you know, multiple control planes, you can run a primary remote, however you wanna set it up. But we also support multiple networks where you wanna run Istio on a different network in a cluster on a different network, but you want those all to be one mesh. And the way we do this is we use gateways. So you have gateways that can talk to each other and we tunnel the traffic through those gateways. So to the applications, they don't need to worry or care where they're running, if they're in a different network than some service they're calling, um, they just call the service and Istio makes it all work. Um, so Lynn is actually gonna talk through uh, the sort of four base scenarios that we have documented on the Istio um, website. So go ahead, Lynn. 
Okay, great. Thank you, Savan. So uh, let's talk about different topology models we have. So in this one, it's um, multi-primary, uh, same network. Um, so the first step you do is install Istio onto each of your cluster. And notice here on the second cluster, you want to make sure you have the right cluster name and network. Uh, it, it's the same and the main thing is the cluster name and then the second thing is uh, create the remote secret so that uh, it can do uh, endpoint discovery for the remote cluster and the way you do it is using create remote secret command um, so that was it at the the same network was uh, really simple. Uh, if you do have a multiple network and you do want a multiple primary for high availability of your control plane, in this case, similarly as the previous, you do uh, Istio, uh, install Istio. Uh, when you do remote uh, service, uh, create remote secret, you want to do it on both of the clusters. Uh, so make sure the endpoints can watch the other clusters uh, API server. And then uh, you want to make sure you are setting up the east and west gateway uh, to help you bridge uh, the network so that the traffic can tunnel through the gateway and reach the other cluster. Um, the, the last step is you want to also expose your user services uh, to make sure you know service A can be uh, can reach out to talk to service B. So um, we we provide samples to allow you to um, by default I think it exposes all the services out on the gateway, but you could potentially uh, tune that to based on your business need. Uh, the third mod model we have is uh, you run primary and remote uh, to the same uh, with the same network. In this case, uh, similar as the pre previous one, you would install Istio on the primary cluster. Uh, notice here we just install Istio on only one of the cluster, which we call primary cluster, and the second cluster was just using the control plane from the first cluster, and then you would also, the second step is set up the cluster two secret on the primary cluster one so that you can make sure the Istio DCOM discovery uh, endpoints uh, for uh, endpoints on the cluster two. The third step is to set up the east or west gateway to help uh, traffic communication. In this case, uh, you can see it also helps uh, service B to reach uh, back to east your control plane on the primary cluster. Um, the fourth step is it expose ISTOD on the gateway. Sorry, I said a little bit earlier. Yeah, that was for the purpose of uh, service B to reach out to ISTOD. Because it's in the same network in this case, uh, service A and service B are actually communicate to each other directly without the needing to hop through the gateway. Um, the last but not the least model we have is primary remote uh, or multi-networks. In this case, uh, you install Istio D only on the primary cluster, same as the previous one. And same as previous one, you create this, uh, this cluster two secret on cluster one for endpoint discoveries. And then you set up the Istio and West gateway, uh, same as the, uh, the previous one. The first one, step four, it exposed Istio D on the gateway. It's also same, uh, but you do have to do uh, one additional step, uh, step five, to expose your user services. This is because your user service A and service B is not going to be able to talk to each other directly because you have multiple networks. So it has to go through the gateway. So you want to make sure your services are exposed on the gateway for the other uh, for services from the other cluster to consume. So what's really nice about these models, as you can see, is they are like building blocks, right? You can base on your uh, requirements and uh, your needs, and you choose the building blocks that's needed uh, to 
to fit your requirements. So with that, we are going to be very excited to talk to you guys about our demo. Gosh, I've never set up something um, across different clouds. So we actually have uh, four clusters. On the left side, we have two clusters, uh, cluster 1i um, with, uh, and cluster 2i on IBM Cloud. In this uh, setup, um, on the left side, um, I believe they are primary, um, multiple, multiple primary, and they are also multiple uh, networks because we don't have uh, flat networks on our cloud. So this is one of the model we talk about. Um, on the right side, um, Savan has set up uh, two clusters on Google Cloud. And in this case, uh, notice we only have Istio D running on cluster one, and there's no Istio D on cluster two. So this is a primary remote. And I believe uh, this is the same network uh, in his environment. So you can see we're experimental different topologies across different cloud, and we're setting up the same um, the, si the single mesh among these four clusters. Uh, from an application point of view, so the purpose is to show you guys the uh, multi-cluster topology. So we decided to use really simple booking for examples. As you can see, we have product page and review version one running uh, cluster one I, and then we have um, Review version two running on two i and review version three have high availability running on Google Cloud with cluster one and two. With that, um, I'm going to go ahead uh, share my screen and uh, and show you guys the demo. Screen two. Okay, so we would like to show you um, our demo now. Uh, so Istio.io, go to multi-cluster installation to set up um, multi-clusters. Um, the first thing we are looking at is um, config trust. Um, so we want to make sure all the clusters are using the same uh, root CA. Um, and each of the cluster would plug in the intermediate CA, which is this common uh, root of trust. On my environment, I already have um, all the certificates and keys created for each of the cluster. Now I'm just uh, creating the CA certs in Istio system namespace for two of the clusters. Um, so the way Istio works is if you plug in uh, your own key and certs, you need to make sure it's named the CA certs. So that essentially tells Istio not to uh, generate self-signed uh, key and certificate. Now I'm installing uh, Istio, um, uh, Istio on this cluster now. Uh, and this is my configuration YAML. You can see I'm installing a primary cluster in this environment with my network and my cluster name. And onto the next cluster, 2i, similar plan, except I'm having a different cluster name and a different uh, network name. So let's go ahead and install that as well. So this uh, basically installs uh, the default profile of Istio, which you can see it's it's essentially just the ingress gateway um, that comes with the default and also the Istio D control plane. We talked about earlier, we're down to one single control plane component, uh, Istio D. So now we're looking at what next should we be setting up uh, in this environment. So the model we're installing is uh, multi-primary uh, different networks. So we're going to need to set up endpoint discovery. We're going to need to set up east and west gateway. So we'll set up our finish on cluster two now. Uh, let's check how the installation did. 
as you can see, um, all the components reaches running within a minute. Now we're going to set up east and west gateway onto each of the two clusters on IBM Cloud. Um, the key thing on this configuration of the gateway YAML for east and west gateway is um, the cluster name and the network name and also the port number. What are the number of ports you are exposing on the gateway? So now we're going to uh, install the east, east and west gateway onto the clusters. So Istio Cuddle install command, it used to be called Istio Cuddle um, manifest generate, and then you apply, cube apply. So now we actually have a single command that takes Istio operator YAML, and then you can apply things. Uh, so I, I really like that simplification. Now we're going to do the same thing on the cluster two. to install the east and west gateway. OK, we got um, this installed. Let's look at the next step. And you would run create remote secrets and generate the secrets the YAML file so that um, your cluster 2 can consume that and also passing that YAML file to Savan so he could um, use um, endpoint discovery on my cluster from Google Cloud. So now we got remote secret generated for both of our, uh, both of my two cluster. Now we're applying uh, on the second cluster, we're applying the first cluster secret, which enables uh, the second clusters to look up, uh, to query the API server on the first cluster to do endpoint discovery. Uh, upon the uh, upon the secrets are uh, applied, you would see the remote Istio remote secret with the cluster name um, as part of your secret in the Istio system. So as you can see on both of my cluster, I have consistent um, consistent secrets. The next thing we're looking at is to expose services so that the other cluster can consume it. So we're going to expose the services on the cross-network um, gateway. Uh, Savan, over to you. Great. Um, so I'm just going to show what we set up in a very similar way over on GCP. So I have two clusters. Um, they're each running, well, actually, one of them is running primary ones remote. So first, let's look at the primary one. So the primary cluster has that same thing that Lynn just set up on IBM Cloud. It has an east-west gateway, an ingress gateway, and SDOD. And then on cluster two, we just have the ingress gateway and SDOD. We don't have an east-west gateway because we're not running the full control plane there. Um, SDOD in that cluster is actually just the CA. It's not running the, the XDS server. Um, so it's a little bit confusing, but it's actually not running the whole control plane, and we're actually working on removing that out. And so you can see the same thing on the service level. There's this istu d remote service that is actually what the remote cluster is using to talk to um, the server. And the installation is very similar to what Lynn showed as well. We just have these istu operator files that have cluster one and cluster two. Um, on cluster two, the difference is this is actually set up as a remote cluster. The profile is remote and it has a remote pilot address. Um, that is the address of the east-west gateway running in the primary cluster. And so basically, that's it. We have uh, two clusters on GCP all set up and ready to go. So back to you, Lynn. OK, great. And now Sivan gave me his secrets. So I apply his secrets on both of my clusters so I can do endpoint discoveries. Now you can see all the secrets are applied. So I have on each of my cluster, I have three of the remote clusters um, so now we're going to look at deploy book info. We talk about uh, in the diagram, we're deploying book info with version two, version one of the review on the first cluster in IBM Cloud. Um, 
So we're going to need to expose um, the Book Info product page on the gateway so we can reach out to uh, Book Info product page. So let's check it out. Uh, so the gateway configuration uh, is very simple. Basically, we're exposing Book Info on uh, HTTP 80 on these uh, different URI passes. Uh, slash product page is our landing page. So I have the gateway information early on. So 123 is the IP address of my gateway. So as you can see, as I visit book info, I should only see review version one, which is no star. So now we're going to deploy review version two onto cluster two I in IBM Cloud. Um, this is just a review version two deployments and service looks like. Um, now, if I ever hit the refresh button, you can see, you know, now it's run robin between two of my cluster. So certainly my product page on first cluster reaches out. Over to you, Savan. Yeah, and so what Liam was just showing, we have the product page working with um, just V1 and V2. And now we're actually going to go install V3 over in Google Cloud. And this one has red stars instead. It's a, it's a big upgrade. Um, and so really similar to what Lynn just showed, we have reviews deployment, the review service, and actually the rating service, because reviews actually calls back to ratings, which is running back in um, IBM Cloud in cluster one. So the path is actually coming into ingress on the IBM Cloud side, going to reviews over in Google, and then going back to IBM for ratings and then back out. So it's actually bouncing back and forth between clouds. But as the app owner, I don't actually care about any of that. I just deploy and now I have red stars. Um, so this is actually a multi-cloud application that is running between the two. So it's pretty exciting. Um, and as you see, it round robins between it round robins between the various options. I think that's it for our demo. Yeah. I'm going to stop sharing. And Savan, uh, over to you to finish up the rest of the slides. Yeah, let me talk a little bit about um, VMs now. So um, so what we showed is how you can have you know a bunch of different Kubernetes clusters all connected. But uh, we know our users have a lot of services on VMs, and they want all those same benefits. and so. What Istio has is this model that we've called uh, VM expansion or mesh expansion. Um, and it's really, it's letting you attach VMs kind of the same way that you attach clusters. And that's actually um, how we kind of have a unified model here. So I can run what we call a workload group, which is really just a group of VMs, um, similar to kind of like a deployment, but it's you know loosely defined as just any VMs that you want to have as a group. And they can use that same east-west gateway they can use Istio D as if they were a remote cluster, um, and they, you know, get registered in the API server, and then you can use those VMs as backends for your for your um, services, and actually have them call into your other services in the mesh. So it all works as one giant big mesh. Um, so let's look at some of the improvements that we've made recently to this, because we've actually had this for a while, but it hasn't been the easiest to use. Um, the big improvements coming in ISTE 1.8 are around um, improving how you register those VMs and how you create them. So we're actually introducing two new uh, commands. I actually realized I left out the X for experimental on these. These are experimental commands. But you can create a workload group really easily. It generates the YAML for you. And then based on that workload group, you can just ask to configure an individual VM. And it'll actually spit out all the configuration files that we need to set that up. Um, so you can just copy those over and run Istio on the VM, and, and it'll be set up correctly. Um, some of the other improvements we have are we have DNS proxying, which um, before this, you had to go and manually change your DNS configuration for your VM, either changing it to point at one of the Kubernetes clusters, DNS servers, 
or setting up your own local proxy that forwards things for the mesh to the cube one and otherwise keeps them in whatever you have for your VMs. Basically, all, all that is simplified. Um, as part of running Istio, we actually run a DNS proxy that will automatically resolve mesh names to IPs and otherwise um, forward to your existing DNS infrastructure. So that greatly simplifies setup. Um, we also have changed how identity bootstrapping happens. In previous versions, there was a very complicated setup with certificates. And I believe the, the 1.7 one, you could only really have one VM attached to a cluster. Uh, didn't really expand very well. This actually uses the existing Kubernetes token infrastructure to bootstrap them. So as part of that workload entry configure, this will actually automatically be generated for you. We generate the token, you copy that to the VM, and then that bootstraps our certificate, which from then on uses just the normal Istio certificate infrastructure. Um, we've also added auto registration, so you don't have to um, worry about manually registering each VM as it comes up, which doesn't work well if you have auto scaling. Um, and we also have health checking coming in too. So these all make VMs kind of as easy to use, hopefully, as pods um, once they're all in place. And let me give kind of a brief example of how this works. So um, just like in multi-cluster, you set up your primary cluster. Um, once you have that in place, you can register a workload group. And so again, we can use these new experimental commands. Here, at least I included the X like I should have. Um, so this says, I want to create a new thing called hello VMs in the sample namespace. Here are some labels. And then that generates a YAML file. And then I can just apply that to stick that in the API server. Um, and the reason I do that is when I want to generate config for the VM itself, I can actually reuse that existing one. Um, actually, you can call it by name. Here, I'm actually <laughs> using the file. But if it's in the API server, you can actually just refer to it by name. Um, you call it workload entry configure with that name and namespace and it generates into the configure all the, the artifacts that you need to run the VM. Um, and basically, that's it. You copy those to the VM, and you um, run Istio. And the VMs will then connect through that east-west gateway to Istio D. Uh, they'll be proxying DNS for you. And all the requests between the entire mesh um, can now go to those VM endpoints, and VM endpoints can call into the mesh. So it, um, all the networking is just set up and working. And that's basically it. Um, so we've walked through a lot of different uh, parts of Istio in this. And um, here are kind of the, the key takeaways. So we've been working really hard to make it easy to build a mesh out of multiple clusters. It was kind of doable before. It was definitely not easy. Um, now it's actually pretty simple. It was uh, even amazing to me and, um, and maybe to Lynn, too, that we were able to get a multi-cloud mesh, multi-cloud, multi-cluster mesh with remotes and multiple primaries and all these regions and different networks, um, some things on flat networks, some in, in isolated mode. And they're all connected. And to add an endpoint to a service was just a single YAML file on one of the clusters. And instantly, you know, product page was able to route to that. Right, Istio took care of all the routing and management of that. You know, you don't have to go set anything up. You don't have to set up all these kind of crazy rules and things. It just it handles it for you, and you know, it's all secure and with MTLS and authorization policies and all that good stuff. Um, as part of this, you can you know choose where you want to install those control planes. Obviously, um, it works across multiple networks. And then the other takeaway is that this is you know works great for Kubernetes, but we're also making it really simple and easy for VMs as well. So those will also be able to join. Um, so thank you very much. Um, Lynn, do you have any other closing remarks? If not, I think we're uh, we're done with our talk. So we appreciate it. And thanks for listening. Yeah, same as you. I'm super pleased to actually set up the demo with you. And everything runs just smoothly without hitting any major issues. It's amazing. Well, thanks you all. Hopefully to see you guys at the conference. Hey, I think we're live.
Go ahead. Can you hear me, Lynn? My talk. Okay. So um, the observability work we haven't. Okay, great. Uh, yes, technical technical issues with live live Q and A here. Um, observability isn't uh, totally multi cluster aware yet. We're actually working on that. Um, I think hopefully in the one dot nine release of Istio, we'll be, be able to have some better stuff there. It's possible to set up, but but it's not easy. Sort of to the we want to make things easy, not just possible. Um, theme here, it's it's not yet that easy, right? We don't have built-in multi-cluster dashboards. Um, you kind of have to set that up yourself. You can actually have like a single Grafana that um, is pulling from Prometheus in multiple clusters, or you can have a single Prometheus pulling from multiple cluster sources. There's a bunch of ways to do it. Um, you don't yet have that all set up, and I think that's something we want to work on. Um, so I can, I can maybe look at the next question. Uh, so there was a question about um, about federation support and intra accounts and intra accounts. I'm not actually quite sure what the that is meant to mean. Um, federation is something we want to continue also making easier. Um, that's that's also not quite as easy as we'd like it yet, um, but we'll get there. If you want to follow up on exactly what you mean about intra accounts versus intra accounts. We can Follow up on the question there. Um, then do you want to answer the one about 1.8? Yeah, I Yeah, the, the hope had been that this 1.8 would actually be out before this this talk, um, but we had some last minute fixes that had to get it, so it's not quite a yet. Yeah, should be soon. Yeah, in our demo, yeah, in our, in our demo, the east-west gateways were exposed publicly on the internet, um, and they did rely on mutual TLS um, to authenticate and encrypt the connections. There are other choices if you want to set up, you know, a private um, VPC or something like that. You can do that too. But in our in our demo, they were. There were a couple of questions noted, noticing the, uh, the problem with the demo video again. Sorry about that. Um, I think the, oh, there's a question, another question about the network setup in this case. So um, on the, I go Internet um, publicly, but you know, protected with um, Istio security. And then uh, Lynn can talk about what's the IBM side of that looks like.
Uh, the uh, the network setup on the IBM side. How is how is the network setup over there? Okay, should we talk about the failover case? Um, so uh, the basically there's there's this feature called locality aware loop balancing in Istio that solves this case for you. So the, the question is about how do I do um, failover? So if I have the same service in two different clusters, um, they're mirrored, how do I make sure it stays local when it's failed? But there, but then fails over to the other cluster if needed. Um, and that's what locality where uh, load balancing is actually for. So you can keep it in the local cluster um, and only send it over to the other cluster if it does, rather than just blindly, you know, round robining between them. So you can, you can look at the Istio documentation for details on Sorry, we're having some lag between between our video streams. But, Then do you want to take the next question about upgrades? I think we're we're just about out of time there. Okay. And we'll we'll try to answer the rest of the questions offline.